Good morning. Welcome to Member Focus Monday. I'm Christina Schaefer, Director of Social Media for HAR. You might have noticed I just set a new title. You are among the first to know that I have been promoted to Director of Social Media for HAR. I'm very excited about it and look forward to expanding our social media presence, but also continuing to build on the foundation we have in place. I also just really quickly want to thank our president and CEO, Bob Hale, our executive vice president, Renee Galvan, and our chief communications officer, Matt Burris, for believing in me and giving me this opportunity to do what I love with a new title, a director title. Um, so now that that's out of the way, I'm pleased to be joined today by Tracy Brown, uh, who is HAR's diversity and inclusion consultant. Welcome, Tracy. Hi, Christina, and you deserve that promotion. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so we wanted to uh, have you on today to talk about cross-cultural communication. This conversation has become increasingly important in the last uh, few years, and we all want to make sure that we're communicating in the right way. Um, so that's what we're going to be discussing today. But if we could start off with just a brief self-introduction, if you could tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. A little bit about who I am and what I do. <laughs> I am based in Dallas. I work with organizations all over the U.S. on uh, cross-cultural communication, inclusion strategy. And uh, I think uh, what best describes the work that I do is that people often say I help them have very sensitive conversations they don't want to have. But in the end, they realize they've transformed their conversation from politics and personality to results and to um, productivity or responsibility. Very good. Um, you spoke for a group of our leaders last week and, and you made the statement, diversity just is. Can you explain what you meant by that? Yeah, so often when people hear the word diversity or even use it, they immediately think, well, oh, it's going to be emotional, intense, and we've got to do something about diversity. Mm -hmm. And really, diversity just is, you know, anywhere we go where there are people, we are going to experience diversity because diversity simply means all the ways we are both ethnically and culturally different from one another. So if I have a hundred people in a room and they are happen to be all the same race and even all the same gender identity, I'm still going to have diversity. So when we talk about diversity, we want to be sure that we are looking at all of the ways that we're different from one another. And then if we want to have a conversation about the impact of race, or we want to have a conversation about the impact of sexual orientation, or we want to have a conversation about the impact of language, right, or any other dimension, we can specify that. But if we're using the word diversity, it just is. And the challenge is not the diversity. The challenge is the stories we tell about the diversity and that we fail to be intentional about being inclusive. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that's such a, a great illustration. You could have 100 people in the room, same gender, same race, and they are still going to, there's still going to be diversity there. So that's a really good way to look at it. Um, so let's get down to it. What are some ways that we can improve our communication skills with clients and customers, especially if they are of a different race or background? That's such a great question. And of course, we could spend four hours on that alone. <laughs> so I am going to do my best to laser. Um, really, the first thing that comes to mind is we can talk less and listen more. Especially when I think about this profession, right? We're selling, we're in real estate, we want to, we have business transactions, we're trying to get a task done. But Realtors also are forming relationships. And so especially in the early stages of building that relationship, it's so important to talk less and listen more. Ask really good questions. Ask questions that will give you answers that tell you about that person's culture. Now, realtors tend to think about I'm asking questions to find out what they need whether it's residential or commercial, 
what are they looking for? How much square footage? You know, what amenities are they looking for? Uh, how many rooms if it's a house? And those are questions that have very finite answers, even though they may be driven by emotion. But also begin to think about what questions can you ask about um, how are decisions made? Like, how are you going to make the decision about whether to buy this house? Because in different cultural groups, it's not just the person buying. It may be the elders in their family who must be consulted. It must be, it may be someone culturally that values indirect communication and uses input from different people. So ask questions like that. How are you going to make the decision? Or what did, of course, you probably already asked, what did you like best about, you know, the neighborhood you live in now? But listen for cultural cues, not just socioeconomic cues. So talk less, listen more, and more than anything else, remember, this person who is different from you in some way that you know has some similarities but they are not just another version of you with darker skin or another version of you who's 20 years younger or older or another version of you who has a different family structure or another version of you who just happens to use a wheelchair for mobility. They are not you and their cultural norms are going to be different than yours and you've got to build that bridge. That's great. I mean, it really is a realtor's job to ask questions, to find their clients what they need. But your challenge here is to really look deeper into those questions and maybe ask some deeper questions like, how will you make this decision? Or or what did you love so much about your the home that you had? Um, you know, maybe it was that it was close to family and that's important to them or whatever the case is. So uh, really great suggestions there. If you have any questions for Tracy, type them into the comments and we'll get to them in just a little bit. So Tracy, let's, let's suppose that I, you know, is brought to my attention that I unknowingly offended a client or customer. What could I do to correct that behavior and and improve in the future so that I don't do it again. So I often talk about how we are unintentionally unwelcoming people. And, and in my years of experience, what I have observed is that, you know, people do get offended or they're made uncomfortable. And I would say more than 85% of the time, it's unintentional. Mm -hmm. So number one, the thing that realtors have to do is recognize that sooner or later, you are going to offend someone. And this is where we then talk to talk about intent does not equal impact or intent does not excuse impact. So when we get that feedback, often what happens is we we get defensive and we're like, oh no, I didn't mean to offend you. Oh no, that was not my intent. And we stay there and we keep trying to convince the person, but I'm a really nice person. I really didn't mean to do that. And what we're doing is we're keeping the attention on ourselves. When really, if we want to build a bridge with that person, we have got to quickly move from ourself and our concern about how we look to how do we, as you said, repair that and build or rebuild trust. So I often recommend that people, number one, acknowledge that the feedback you got is true from that person's perspective, whether you intended that result or not, mm -hmm. for them, that's true. So that might sound like, wow, yes, I didn't intend that. And I am surprised or I'm glad to know that that was something I shouldn't say anymore. But then we want to get more information. We want to find out exactly what it was that created the discomfort or the miscommunication so that we don't do it again. Instead of just, well, I just won't talk anymore. I just won't interact with people from that identity group anymore because clearly I don't know what I'm doing. So get information, acquire information, and then ask if you need to, what would be better in the future? Or what 
should I do differently in the future? And then make a commitment to action. Like, wow, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you shared that with me, Christina. I really didn't know. And now I, you know, won't do that again. Or now I'm going to go read more about cultural appropriation because I really hadn't even heard of that before. Mm -hmm. Right. So remember that intent does not excuse impact. Use the situation to learn something that you can apply to other potential clients or clients in the future. And third, don't be up on yourself. Mm -hmm. I often suggest people get a give themselves a learner's permit. You're learning. How are you going to know about what makes someone who is blind more comfortable and able to trust you if you don't ask them or learn from them? That's great. Those are great suggestions. You know, um, I'm, I'm curious what you think about this. There's a realtor that I know that um, he, now that the conversation has been something that we're talking about and, and we're not afraid to talk about anymore, um, he kind of asked people in his circle, in his life, you know, have I ever said anything that offended you and found out from a close friend that he had said something that offended him years prior, but it was still living in that friend's mind. So is that something that you would suggest to do? Just kind of ask just for the sake of being able to learn? Especially if you have people who are from different identity groups than your own and you have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Now you can't go into the conversation with, hey, I'm really interested in diversity now. Tell me anything I've ever done ever in life. I mean, you know, like I'm so excited. But if you have an authentic relationship with someone to be able to say, you know, wow, I really am interested in this and I never thought about it before. And I trust you to tell me truly, mm -hmm. right? What are some things that I have done either to you or you have observed me that might make me appear insensitive or et cetera, or might have offended you. Mm -hmm. And then when you get that feedback, just say, thank you. Mm -hmm. Don't excuse it. Don't justify it. Just say thank you or ask for what would be more appropriate, especially if it's, you know, related to terminology or language, you know, ask. And then another good question to ask in that scenario would be, so why didn't you tell me then? Mm -hmm you know, or why haven't you told me? And they will most likely say something similar to, I value the relationship. Or they might say, oh, because people say that kind of thing all the time. And I know that you, I knew that you didn't know it was offensive. Yeah. Right. And it, so it didn't get in the way of us having a relationship, but I'm, you know, glad that you asked now and you want to know. And I want to re-, re enforce that this is not again it is about race but mm -hmm. it's not just about race um i had an experience a long time ago but i never will forget it where i was at a conference and i walked up to a booth and i of course reached out my hand to you know shake hands with the person who was working the booth. And I thought it was a little strange because he didn't reach out to shake my hand. And this is a business setting. And mm -hmm. what do you do in a business setting? You shake hands. And uh, as I was a little confused, his coworker happened to come back to the booth and she reached out and sh shook my hand, but handed me a business card and said to him, you know, oh, this is Tracy Brown, blah, blah, blah. And when I looked down at the business card, I realized that the business card had type on it, but it also had braille on it mm. and he was blind. And I had no idea that he was blind because he, the eye contact, of course, was toward the sound of me speaking to him. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't realize, I didn't expect it in that environment and I didn't realize it. And so I was able to have a conversation then that really was about 
tell me what it's like, you know, to be in this role. And, and we had a great conversation. And then literally over the next four years, you know, I got coaching just because I was have, asking him questions. So now I feel really comfortable and I can spot subtle things that I would not have spotted then. Very good. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that example. Um, we have a, a few questions coming in, and one of which is is right on par with what I was about to ask you myself. Um, Lisa asked, what is the best way to address a client's words or actions that we find offensive, insensitive, or rude? I can't say there is a best way. So what you want to do is, like with most communication challenges, you want to have a toolkit, right? So you want to have a, a variety of things that you thought about and practice. So the challenge in the 21st century in our society right now is we are so polarized that we think the only way to react is to shut the person down, mm -hmm. right? We, we live in a cancel culture. Oh, you said something bad and now I'm just going to write you off. And obviously, you're in business of serving people and meeting people. And that's not your goal to just shut them down, write them off, or tell them how bad or how wrong they are. So there are, there are two or three things that come to mind, in, you know, quickly, immediately off mm -hmm. the top. So one of them is um, an example of if someone is asking you, to do something that is in violation of the realtor's code of ethics or standards of practice, then I, I believe that as a professional in this industry, you have to find a way to say that. Now that could be as soft as, wow, it surprises me that you would ask that. You know, as realtors, we have a real strong commitment to selling um, real estate to all, to anyone, and to people from all identity groups. Mm -hmm. You can even say, if you feel you need to, you know, that actually is against our code of ethics, and I can't promise you that I will do that. Now, the challenge with that, being that direct, is mm -hmm. how do I prioritize integrity compared to income mm -hmm. because you're you're in business to make money you want the client you want to make the sale you you do you want to close that client at the same time you will have to deal with your integrity if you agree to what they're asking you to do mm -hmm. and we are in a time where that is really dangerous and it is really, you know, you're going to know that you were not in alignment. Mm -hmm. So what else can we do? Let's say that someone says something and you just personally find it offensive and it's not really necessarily against the code of ethics, mm -hmm. but you, it's insensitive um, and you personally find it insensitive. And then I would say you would behave the same way you would if it was any other stranger and again, you don't have to attack people. One of the best and easiest things you can say is just that, wow, I'm really surprised that you would say that. Mm -hmm. Another thing that works really, really well is to simply ask the question, what do you mean by that? And then stop talking. Because often people say things and then when you say, what do you mean? And they have to slow down three seconds and think about what they said. They go, oh, that really was, you know, that really wasn't fair or that really was a stereotype. And that's another word that you can use. Uh, you can, I have used this so many times to say to people, wow, you know, I've heard that stereotype too. But because I know people who are part of that group, whatever mm -hmm. the group is, I've learned that that's not always true. 
or that's not the case for everyone who is gay or lesbian, or that's not the case for everyone who's moved here from another country. That's not the case, um, you know, with the people I know who are African American, you know, they're not, and then use the same adjectives that they use. So that's another way to not ignore it, but not attack the person. Is that helpful? I think so. Yeah, definitely. You know, along those same lines, I wanted to ask you about um, fair housing. We've had numerous reports over the years from members saying their clients are making racist or inappropriate comments or also asking realtors to do things like only market my property to this subset of people, um, you know, or they're asking them to directly violate fair housing laws in, in other ways. So how would you advise realtors to deal with that? Would that be similar to what you just said as far as, you know, code of ethics versus fair housing? You know, is, is it a similar conversation? Well, of course it's similar. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. And that's why you have to have in your toolkit a variety of responses. So I'm really glad this question and the question before came up because what often happens is we think, well, nobody will do that. And then we find ourselves in the situation where someone does ask you to violate a regulation or a policy and you don't know what to say. You've never really thought about it, mm -hmm. right? And so then you're like, things come out of your mouth and afterwards you're like, oh, I wish I could take that back. <laughs> so with fair housing, I think we do have to educate. Like you have to educate your clients and at the same time, don't be naive enough to think because the fair housing laws were passed decades ago that everybody was in agreement with them and everybody complies with them. Now, my experience with realtors who are part of HAR is that, you know, you all are really experienced for the, for the most part. Obviously, there are new people coming into the profession every week mm -hmm. but many of you have a lot of experience and so you know that that belief is out there and you know that people will make inappropriate requests and how would you handle that if it was someone you cared about right you mm -hmm. you have to think about it in advance so the only the Another thing, not the only other thing, but another thing that comes to mind for me is the proactive, the proactive education and the proactive marketing. So when you are thinking about your marketing and your branding, make that a part of your branding we support or we enforce or we operate in uh, in in alignment with fair housing not just have the little thing in six point type at the bottom of page 25 of your website but actually in how you talk to clients in how you market yourself in your print materials in your web-based materials because Number one, it will reduce the number of people who come to you with those kinds of challenges. Mm -hmm. But two, when people do say, oh, you know, you're just like me, they look at you and for whatever reason, oh, you're just like me, you know, this is what we're going to do. Like, it's kind of let's keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. I would like to believe that the majority of professional realtors would not support that um, hypocrisy because it hurts the profession. Mm -hmm. And so you might get two new clients, but then they are talking about the realtor they used who did what they wanted. And, um, and then that hurts the reputation of all other realtors. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, there's a few, few, um, a few examples in the comments of people making inappropriate or offensive comments to realtors. Um, Dan King, actually Lisa clarified, she was referring to cli clients and customers 
that have made offensive comments to her in reference to her last name, for example. Or um, Dan King said a few people have asked him, what type of Chinese are you? You know, so what what would be your response? Is it just kind of similar to to something like that? If they're saying something that offends you personally. Right. And, and I know that has to happen because... Mm-hmm right? We're in the service profession and you meet all kinds of people and they are coming to you raw and live, like who they are. So I, 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 in this case, I do believe it is important that we would do this in any place that we are, but it is especially important when we're in our professional service role. So it becomes an education role. My feelings might be hurt I might be really angry. It might be something that triggers me in a way that my I can feel my emotion like rising, mm-hmm. but that's not the time to be angry. It's not the time to be accusatory. And remember, you actually always do have the, you know, final say in whether you work or don't work with a client. But you do respond. Mm-hmm. And I I have talked to some people who said, well, I just swallow hard and take it. And, you know, inside I'm rolling my eyes, but I need the business. Mm-hmm. But then you feel bad about yourself mm-hmm. often. And, or you feel angry with that client and you're representing them and you don't do your best work for them. So I think you can challenge people. I've challenged people um in many ways and again it i'll just give some other examples even though they're very similar like um what what did you mean by that or wow i don't understand your question you know what kind of chinese are you i don't understand your question or um Oh, wow, that's an interesting question. I don't get asked that much because actually I'm not Chinese, I'm Korean. Mm-hmm. Or I'm I'm not actually Chinese, um, right? Or well, people will ask a lot of times, they will ask people, where did you come from? Or, you know, what, where did you grow up expecting mm-hmm. a country that's outside of the U.S., but they're second or third generation American, U.S. Americans, U.S. Mm -hmm. citizens born and raised in the U.S. And so those are the things that you are able to simply say, you know, oh, wow, yeah, I've lived in the U.S. all my life. And what would make you think otherwise, Mm -hmm. right? So the often your answer or response is going to be, a well-placed question that puts the potential client or the person in the community back on the, oh, I need to look at myself. On rare occasions, it is perfectly fine to say, I am offended by that question. But most of the time, you don't have to say that. You simply have to respond in a way that indicates that was not an appropriate question. Very good. Dan uh, followed up with a comment saying that he tells them, he said, I usually say I'm American. (laughs) So that's great. Um, So you mentioned that there's some clients you may just not need to work with. Um, We had a question come in here, just how do you go about letting somebody know this is not going to be a good fit? Um, without offending them. For example, I'm not, or you may not be comfortable dealing with multiple decision makers when there's only one buyer. So there are two things happening here. One is it's not a good fit. And I'm, I'm thinking about how I frame this. So if it's not a good fit from an integrity point of view in terms of legalities and regulations, then it's an opportunity to educate. Don't miss the opportunity to educate because often what you will say, you know, the client, potential client may have two things going on and anything in between. On the one hand, if you say, you know, actually that would be in violation of the fair housing laws and I'm not willing to 
to do to commit to that but i really still would love to work with you i'm sure that i can sell your home or i'm sure that you know i can help you find a home that you are going to love or if it's commercial i i think you will love this building for these four reasons you know but just be aware that there are clients in this building who represent all different groups mm -hmm. so you can do that and by educating and especially if you do it in the context of it's not me personally these are fair housing laws or these are the realtors professional standards so you may be able to find another real estate professional but as realtors we have a higher standard mm -hmm. and we have great experience and I'm not sure you'll want to work or get the same result, All right? So that's education. On the other hand, if I don't think it's going to be a, bit, a good fit because I'm learning things about them culturally that may be difficult for me, then you have to look at yourself first and say, mm -hmm. is this an opportunity for me to learn something from this client, learn how to work with this family, and that is going to serve me and give me an entree into an entire community that I've not worked with before and build and grow my business. So there is an economic carrot of learning to deal with, interact with, provide professional service to people who are different from you because you learn each time and then not only because they will refer you, but you now know how to approach an entire group of buyers or sellers who you didn't even know you were bypassing before. Mm -hmm. So I would look there first. Is there is this an opportunity for me, you know, in this example, um, to work with a different identity group than my own and learn something that will help me grow my business. So that's a whole different rationale. That's a whole different motivation than uh, I'm doing it because it's politically correct. Or I'm doing it because now I've got to show that I am sensitive to diversity. No, you want to do it because you are thinking about I live in the and work and sell in the Houston metropolitan area, which is the most diverse metropolitan area in the United States. And how am I limiting my potential marketplace mm -hmm. by only interacting with people who I'm comfortable with, who think like I do, who have the same customs, habits, or norms? I want you to make a lot of money. <laughs> I want you to grow your business. I want you to make an impact because we all know if it's residential, whoever buys, not only do they tell 10 people they could result in customers, but then the next generation, their children or their nieces and nephews, and then their children, you want to build a legacy, mm -hmm. then you want to be comfortable engaging with people whose norms are different than your own. And I will stop there because I can feel myself doing like, you know, the 90 minute workshop on the <laughs> Which we do want to get into because I know you are working closely with our director of professional development, Rita Blevins, on some course material for this year. So what um, classes can realtors look into to dive a little deeper into this topic? Yeah, so um, actually, you know, go in on the HAR site and look at the right. There's the at home with diversity certification yes. program. There are several other classes from a two hour class to um, webinars that are going to be coming up over the next few months. Uh, we're going to do a webinar that I think we're going to call oops. I didn't mean to offend like and what do you do and what are some of the common things that come up and specifically some tools and models that you can practice that will help you go through a process this quickly to repair that relationship um, and we're going to be looking at how in marketing 
what are some unintentional messages you send that push people away? And how can you, through your images and your languaging, attract lots of different communities? So yeah, there's gonna be a lot coming in education, but there are already some existing courses. There's the International Day and the um, three-hour series three one-hour element series. So if you find yourself uh, wanting to engage with people who have immigrated into uh, Houston or who have lived here, but they live in their family life very close to internationally ethnic norms, then those courses are great. Wonderful. Thank you. And it sounds like there's going to be a wide variety for people to pick pick from. John made a comment about um, At Home with Diversity, which you also mentioned. And we did put the link to that in the comments for you guys. So if you are wanting to look into At Home with Diversity, we've we've put that in, that link in the comments directly to that um, page there. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, John. And thanks for highlighting that because it is a really, really good class. And what just got triggered for me that I do want to be sure to say is that, again, I want to go back to where we began. If you're thinking about diversity as just race, race is important and it is one element of diversity. But you really want to understand how culture and we all represent or have um, within us, we're representing dozens of different cultures, cultural norms we've learned based on age or race or religion or uh, sexual, sexual orientation and gender identity or our profession even. Mm -hmm. What are some of the assumptions we make? And so the more you can learn, the more you can practice, the better bigger you can grow your business. Excellent. Um, a great suggestion here from Lisa. She said, your broker should have a referral protocol that you can utilize on behalf of your client's needs. I had a client who preferred a realtor that spoke her native language, so I was able to refer her to an agent with whom she would be more comfortable with to avoid any lost in translation moments. So great suggestion there from Lisa. Um, so Tracy, you've shared so much great information this morning. Is there anything else you want to share with us before we wrap up? Well, before we wrap up, yes, there are a couple of really quick things. Mm -hmm. One, cross-cultural communication is a skill. We learn skills. We're not born with them automatically. And most of us grew up where we are around people and we're trained to hang out with people who are more like us mm -hmm. than not like us. But when we get into the world of business, we are doing business with people who are not exactly like us and may not even know, right, our norms, but it's our job to know their norms and to get to know that and to figure out how to serve that. So think of it as a skill. Now is your time to take up on the opportunity to develop, enhance, or expand your skills in cross-cultural communication for the purpose of building your business. And then number two, I mentioned it before, but I'm gonna say it again, um, give yourself a learner's permit. Don't be afraid to make a mistake, but learn from the mistakes that you make. Excellent, thank you. Um, a lot of people thanking you for this great information. Dan, Dan King said that was powerful, thank you. So we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, we appreciate your time with us this morning. Um, next week, we will be joined by HR's Director of Video Services, uh, Claudia Hernandez. She is going to be talking to us about video marketing, which is very important for realtors. So we'll see you back next Monday at 9 a.m. Have a great week. Bye-bye.